there we go. Okay, so we're gonna look at a complex circuit. So a complex circuit means it's not series or parallel, but some combination between the two. So for example, let's say we have a circuit that looks like this. One resistor here, one resistor here, and one more resistor here. So here's the circuit that I want to try to solve. Um, let me give you some numbers here. Let's say this is 40 ohms, 20 ohms, 60 ohms, and what was I going to use? I think this is... 70. Okay, so we're going to try to solve the circuit. So what I mean by that is I'd ask you to solve for the VIP of the circuit. That's the currents, voltages, powers for each resistor. And oftentimes on a test they will not ask you to find everything. They'll just say, okay, what's the power of the 20? Or what's the voltage of the 60? Or what's the current of the 40? So you just find it and then stop. So when you look at this circuit, it's complicated looking, right? We got three resistors and there's not just a nice equation that works for this. So what you want to do is try to break it down till you get to eventually one single resistor. So we're going to first try to simplify the circuit so that we can end up with one resistor. So we're going to first get two. We're going to simplify it down to two. So what you want to notice here is if we look at the 20 and the 60, what do you notice about the 20 and the 60? What's the relationship between the two? Parallel. They're a parallel circuit, right? So 20 and 60 are a parallel circuit. So what we're going to do is we're going to simplify the circuit a little bit, not completely, but just the 20 and 60. So everything else we're going to leave the same. The 20 and the 60 were not. So on your paper, can you go ahead and solve that for me? That's a parallel circuit. How do we solve parallel circuits? One, one overs, yeah, one overs. Okay, what did we get? 15. Okay, so I did not want 70. So let's just change this. 115. 115. No, no, no. 110. Great, I'm recording this. 110. 110. That's our starting voltage. Okay, so once we've reached this point, you should notice that this looks familiar, right? What kind of circuit is this? A series circuit. So we can solve a series circuit. We've learned how to do those. How do we solve series circuits? Add them up. That's all we're going to do. So we're just going to simply add them up. So this... We just add them up, so that's 55. And this one is now 110 still. Okay, so these are supposed to be 110, 110, 110. So the voltages will always stay the same. That's just like your battery or your outlet or whatever it happens to be. And we're just going to solve for our uh, resistances. So if I asked you the equivalent resistance, the answer would be 55. Once you've done this, now we're just going to go backwards. And we're going to start solving for missing things, specifically currents and voltages. We're going to find missing currents and missing voltages. So we're going to start with the simplest, which would be this one right here. So we know the voltage, we know the resistance. What are we missing? The current. So we're going to find the current through here. We're just going to use our Ohm's law, V equals I equals V over R, 110 divided by 55. 
gives us a current of 2 amps. Okay, so what we've just found is the current through here is 2 amps. Then what we're going to do is just take what we learned and slowly work our way back until we're on the original circuit. So we're on this one, now we're going to say, okay, 2 amps is moving through here, but what do we know about series circuits? they get the same current. There's only one current, so they get the same current. So there's two amps moving through the 40, there's also two amps moving through the 15. So now what are we missing? We're missing, so notice we know the current through each of these, but we're missing the voltage across them. And so we're just gonna solve for missing V's, solve for missing I's as we move our way through. So this one, we're missing the voltage, so we're going to use V equals I times R, or 2 amps times 40 ohms. That equals 80. So in other words, the voltage across the 40 ohm, maybe I'll do it down here, across the 40 ohm is 80 volts. We're going to do it for the 15 as well. Same thing. V equals I times R. 2 amps, 15 ohms. V is 30. Now as you go, you should be doing little mini checks on yourself. What should be true about the 80 and the 30? It should add up to 110. Right, so 80 plus 30 equals 110. All right, then we're gonna place what we learned on the original circuit. So we're almost done, we almost got everything. So we just learned that this was two amps and this was 80 volts. Okay, now here's kind of the big conceptual leap you have to make for this particular circuit. The 15, remember the 15 is an equivalent of the 2060 parallel circuit. So 15 was equivalent to these two. And what do we know about circuits in parallel? They have the same voltage. The same voltage. Good. So that means the voltage across the 15 is going to be the voltage across each of these, or both of them are going to have that same voltage. So we know the voltage across the 20 and the 60, and usually I can write it like this is 30 volts. This means if I put a voltmeter here, it would be 30. If I put a voltmeter here, it would be 30. Put one here, 30. So they're all going to be 30. So what are we missing now in this circuit? The current, right. So we're missing the current through each of these branches. So we're just going to use Ohm's law one last time. We're going to go I equals V over R, find the current through each branch. So this one is 30 over 20. So this one is 1.5 amps moving through it. Less. This one is 30 over 60. That means it has 0 0.5 amps moving through it. And again, you can do one last mini check, which should be true about these two currents. Should add up to two, right? So this plus this should equal the total. Okay, so let's just go fill in our table. So our 40 ohm, and you can do this as you go. I would recommend doing that. That way you can kind of see what's missing and what you still need to find. So the 20 ohm was 30 volts and 1.5 amps, and the 60 ohm was 30 volts, and 0 0.5 amps. And then the powers, once you know the V's and the I's, the power should be very easy. 45 watts, 160 watts, 15 watts, Which of these light bulbs is the brightest bulb? If these were light bulbs, which one would be the brightest? 
of 40, okay? This would be number one. What's number two? 20. And number three? So if you notice, back when we were doing pure series or pure parallel, there was always a nice relationship. Either the greatest resistor had the greatest uh, power or the smallest resistor had the greatest power. What happened here? There's no doesn't matter about the resistance, right? The 40 is the brightest. Why is 40 brightest? Because of its location, okay? The 40, notice here, what has to happen with the currents for each of these? They split them up, right? So these have to share the currents, whereas this one gets all the current, right? The full two amps, these have to split them up. So 40 will be the brightest. I mean, if I would have switched 20 and 40 here, the 20 would have then been the brightest. So it's all about the location. What about 20 versus 60? Which one is brightest there? 20, because this time, the smallest resistance. So they both have the same voltages, they're in parallel, therefore the smallest resistance is going to get the greatest power.